Awesome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Wild Masterclass. I've got two incredible individuals with us. First up, we've got Michelle Mitchell uh, from Michelle Mitchell Health Coaching. She's a life coach and an NLP practitioner, and just as a, a world leader in that space of helping people heal their bodies. And of course, we have the very handsome David Pemberton as well from David Pemberton Coaching. He's a personal empowerment coach. He's a personal trainer and also a specialist when it comes to the mind-body connection. So we're in for a real treat, and what a wonderful opportunity to talk about coaching and creating success for clients, but obviously given the, the two experts we have on the call today, the opportunity to understand a little bit more about health and how to be able to transform your health from the inside out. Michelle, I might start with you, my dear. Tell us a little bit about what you do and, and the work that you do at Michelle Mitchell Health Coaching and, and tell us about the, the types of clients that you see and, and how you go about making a difference in people's lives. Thank you. I am a health coach, um, a certified life and NLP practitioner as well. Um, I help uh, women and men uh, heading into their 40s and middle age um, get unstuck, reboot their life through um, through their health and through working with them on dealing with their health, nutrition and wellness goals. Nice. So health, nutrition and wellness. Yep. And it, you know, for, it, if I'm right, you're more focusing on your health outcomes in or out of the gym or does it not really matter? You're more focused on the nutrition and the mindset, that side of the, the training spectrum as opposed to lifting weights and getting into the gym or do you cover a bit of that as well? Oh, I'm more um, nutrition and well-being and mindset. Outstanding. Um, Great. And how long have you been doing that for, Michelle? Um, 12 months. Wow. Fantastic. And what were you doing before this? What got you into the world of, of, of health and wellness coaching? I was stuck in Groundhog Day in corporate okay. and stuck in a concrete jungle Yep. in a job that really didn't suit me. Yep. And I was really unhappy and I was really stuck. Yes. So, my 40s I won't tell you exactly what age <laughs> <laughs> we'll say 39 plus GST <laughs> yes, exactly. and I I was sick and tired of being sick and tired pretty much and so I decided to do something about it I was sick of not living the life I had planned for myself that I had imagined that I would be living yeah and so I started with my health because that was the one thing that I knew that I could change quite yeah. easily um, yeah. without completely overhauling everything. So I started yeah. there. Nice. And it's it's fascinating to me how many people that I meet that are working in jobs they don't love that have uh, sickness and illness and chronic yeah. conditions. And part of that is obviously, you know, the motor skeletal system and just them not moving properly and their poor yeah. diet and all that sort of stuff. But in so many ways, when you bring it down to the root cause, it's just they're not living a life of purpose or passion. And when you're yeah. not living a life of purpose and passion, you have to try and find a way to fill that void in some capacity. Uh, and whether that, you know, ultimately results in poor diet or poor health or just not living a full and vibrant life, I think it makes such a big impact. So wonderful that we've got you here with us. Yeah. Uh, David, I might go to you and tell us a little bit about your background here and, and type of work that you do with clients over at uh, David Pemberton Coaching? Uh, yeah, I'm a personal empowerment coach. Um, and what my journey led me to this point was uh, back about 12 years ago, I actually had three heart operations mm. um, through abuse of a, a perceived lifestyle. So it kind of got me on the path wow. of the health, the health um, journey. Um, yeah, it became a bronze medallion surf life saving i became an exercise therapist a strength and conditioning coach um, i've worked with the manly seagulls uh, i became an excellence coaching master practitioner a go wow. pro master practitioner um, now combining that with my new certifications or in the last 12 months of nlp and uh, also life coaching now combining my two passions um, of mindset and health, mind health, and also with body health moving forward to uh, helping people that have been through similar situations to me with uh, not having a purpose but have been tied or their they're wrists shackled by medications, by not moving properly, by eating properly, using their mouth as a garbage compactor, um, and basically self-sabotaging. And if yeah. I can change, 
anybody can change. Yeah, and ideally, you know, you get clients to change before they have to have three heart operations as opposed to, you know, after that fact, right? You know, yep. we say often in our trainings, as you both know, uh, that people change for two reasons, inspiration or desperation. And uh, unfortunately, too few people change for inspiration. And then when things get difficult, they're in a world of pain. And if the, certainly the time that you would want to you know, dedicate to improving your health is when you've still got your health available to work on, as opposed to you've had a real breakdown in that. Michelle, I would like to, you know, dive deep into your field here with regards to the work that you do for clients and I'm interested for people that are out there that are looking to become a health coach and starting in that journey maybe they're in a job like what you were a couple of years ago and then you're not enjoying what you're doing you want to make that transition talk to me a little bit about some of the common problems and challenges that you see clients present because I think for coaches particularly coaches that are new in the world there's a lot of anxiety around what if a client gives me a problem that I'm not accustomed to dealing with right and you know how do you how much do you need to prepare before you get started in my experience as a coach, most people present the same stuff Monday to Friday, right? It's obviously there is always going to be a case or two, which is quite obscure. But in the in the mainstream, most people do the same stuff every single day and you end up dealing with five or 10 problems repeatedly. So for you, what do you see as the, the common problems and challenges that you deal with as a practitioner? Well, some of the common problems I come across with my clients is one, they have no... No, morning, no daily routine, no healthy daily right. habits that they right. can fall back on that anchor them when life gets tough. Yep. So I work with my clients and we build healthy, sustainable, long-term ha- uh, habits into their yep. daily life. Um, we look at uh, nutrition, what you're eating. Um, yep. uh, we, I personally love food and I love making whole food tasty, delicious and yet easy. You don't have to give up and deprive yourself of the things you love to be healthy. Not yeah. anymore. It, you yeah. don't have to eat just lettuce. That's a total myth. Um, and so I go through that with my clients and I go through your, their sleep and their stress. Sleep and stress are so important. And too many people are overstressed and underslept. And that's one of the main reasons why they're so unhappy and so unhealthy. Yeah. So work on that and they're self-sabotaging um, so, excuse me, self-sabotaging, self-belief habits. Yeah, you really don't realize how much of an impact that your sleep and stress make. Yeah. Um, and p- partly because, you know, obviously there are times in people's lives that are particularly stressful, right? Um, and we all go through periods of intense stress, but it's the chronic stress, the underlying stress, the day-to-day stress that builds up and you almost build up a tolerance, which is quite dangerous because you don't yeah. realize how stressed you are. Uh, I know from my own experience and, and Michelle, we've had this conversation before, you know, last year I was trying for uh, a child and we were really struggling and uh, when I went through and got some tests done, I realized that because I was so stressed in the work that I was doing uh, and I wasn't sleeping properly, that was impacting on my sperm count. Obviously that delayed our ability to have kids. Thankfully, you know, we've now conceived and we're expecting a beautiful little girl in September, but it, it was, you know, thank you. But it was, it was a real struggle for us for a long time. And then that then puts even more stress on you because you're thinking this is meant to be easy and it's not. And you know, the, the biggest challenge for me at that time was going, I'm not stressed. I've been stressed, but this is not stressful. But that's just because I was overstressed before, you know, that chronic stress. And then you come to a level of of going, oh, this is more natural, normal for me. But it's not by comparison to a life of someone that's far less stressed, you don't realize. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, your cortisol is going up and down, up and down. You don't even realize it. Before you know it, your internal workings are like a pinball machine. and You're all over the place. And when you're all over the place and you're cortisol's out of whack and your sleep and your melatonin and your serotonin and your happy hormones are crashing yeah Yeah, your life just starts to unravel very very quickly yeah 100 percent. yeah absolutely for clients that come to see you you know if there was one or two things that you rely on as your sort of I mean, go to your 80, 20 principles, you know, that if you were to prescribe these, so to speak, and, um, and you were to give them as a remedy for, for their work, uh, or any of the challenges they present themselves, what do you find are your normal, uh, the, the tools, if you will, that are your go-to that you find you get the best bang for buck from? Um, your diet and yep. your sleep, diet and sleep. I tell my clients all the time, focus, let's focus on diet, focus on good, whole foods that fuel you yep and let's get your sleep under control because yep. the old saying uh, a good sleep cures everything yep. is so true you feel yep. so much better after a good sleep um and what happens to your body when you are sleeping 
and the rest and repair that it does and the cleaning that it does sets you up. Yeah, yeah, in a massive way. I think that's fantastic. Uh, David, same questions for you. When you're working with clients and you've got uh, you know, clients that you've been working with, whether that be elite athletes, I think you mentioned the Manly Sea Eagles, right, all the way down to the average mum and dad that want to build strength and lose a bit of weight, you know, where do you see is the common denominators and the common challenges or pitfalls that people have both in and outside the gym from their health and wellness outcomes? Uh, 100%, I believe that it would be nutrition. People's actions don't sometimes uh, portray what they're actually speaking or what they want. Yes. Um, the 80-20 rule, when I believe in fitness, is thrown out the window. It should be 100% nutrition and 100% movement or exercise, but exercising correctly for your body or for your body type. Right. Um, postural inadequacies from people sitting in office environments all day is kind of detrimental to people moving because they've got this perceived pain through back, through calves, et cetera. So um, identifying that, identifying, as Michelle said, identifying nutrition, combine the two, 100% package, mindset and being aware of how things are working and how they should be working is uh, is a recipe for uh, moving to the proper best version of you. Yeah, excellent. So talk to me, let's drill down a little bit on that, you know, because you talked about exercising and training for your body type, so to speak, um, you know, and, and what immediately comes to mind is, you know, you've seen the, the examples for, for female physiques and male physiques as well. You've got apples and pears and oranges and, and, and yeah, and all those different types of things. And I don't imagine that's necessarily what you're referring to. So give me a bit of an insight here in terms of you know, when you're working with a client, what's some of the changes that you would make for a client depending on their body type or their goals? You know, how would that vary their training? If you're, if you're just starting and you have no idea what that represents, how to unpack that for me. Okay, for me, it's all about foundation. You've got to lay a good foundation. So through my testing protocols, I find that foundation, whether it be at the bottom level, middle level, or yes, you've come, you've been an athlete prior but you've had some bad habits after you've retired or not doing that chosen sport anymore. So I strip it all back. Everybody goes through the same testing protocol. It's an hour and a half worth of that testing. And then depending on your level of um, strength, range of movement, I then prescribe exercises. Uh, We can either regress or progress them depending on your level of advancement. So stripping everything back, everybody has got problems that they are unaware of. Yeah. I identify them, build on them, and get them stronger. I can change somebody's posture, which then portrays a fitter, more confident-looking person without actually changing their body fat percentage. And it's just activating dormant muscles or muscles that are atrophied, get them awake, and make them work properly. Excellent. Now, you strike me as someone that's very technical, David, which I like, and I think it's quite needed in the world that you're in as well. But I am interested to, to ask you this question. You know, when a client comes to you, what are they ultimately buying, right? And what I mean by that is you've obviously got clients that come on board um, that are looking for strength and conditioning training, right? But that's a sort of vehicle. It's a means to an end. Or you've got the, you know, the mom that, you know, has just started getting back into the gym after having a couple of kids. So when you're working with clients, what do you see as the common outcomes that people are really looking to achieve in health and fitness and wellness? Effectively, what is the result that they're trying to buy from you? They're, they're wanting to look better and feel better. I believe purpose, the, the more you can have a better posture, the portray the better vibration of so to speak, Speak, which automatically then draws people to you. Yeah. It's that engagement. It's, it gives you that confidence. Um, if you're walking around with your shoulders hunched forward, you're portraying yeah. that. So what people are buying from me is the knowledge and the expertise and the experiencing all wrapped up into a package, uh, which is deliverable through technology um, and then being accountable for those sessions that they do without me. Um, yeah. I can actually... Uh, I've got an app which I use that the, right. I send them to the program and I can actually see when they've done something or when they haven't done something. Unbelievable. Fantastic. So, Michelle, I want to talk a little bit about business and your business specifically. So not so much health coaching, but just the business in general. You know, you're working in a corporate environment, right? Obviously, you're successful at what you're doing, uh, but you're not fulfilled. And then you make this sort of leap 
of faith, so to speak. And that can be a really daunting and challenging process. And, you know, it's, it, it's only been in the last couple of years you've made the shift. So it's fantastic. We really get a, a deep dive in terms of what that was really like for you. So tell me a bit about that journey, because I, I speak to so many people that are working in jobs they don't want, that would love to be in a position where they could just do coaching full time. So, you know, when was the moment where you drew the line in the sand and said, I'm going to make this happen? What did that journey look like? What were some of the challenges, some of the, the wins along the way? Give me a bit of an insight in terms of what, what that experience was like. Well, as I said, I was stuck in corporate and, um, well, that came to an abrupt end when there was change management in the firm and there right. was um, pretty much the middle layer was made redundant, which was me. Right. And so I was, I went for another job interview and um, I remember sitting in a job interview just going, I don't want to do this anymore, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Um, so I took six months off um, and I really sort of, every day I'd get up and go, okay, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you love? And I love being healthy. I love being fit. I love being energetic. I love being vibrant. And I didn't have that anymore and that was missing. So yeah. I started to look at careers in the health industry um, and I stumbled across um, this course online for health coaching. Um, and it was easy, it was doable, it was affordable. So I dove straight in and I loved every second of it. I right. couldn't believe that I, I hadn't found it before. And then a friend of my um, husband's, uh, he was really unhappy, really over, uh, overweight, really overweight. And he put his hand up and said, can you help me? Wow. And um, yeah, he's now training for the Sydney Marathon. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah. So I got him on uh, a healthy eating plan, a healthy eating regime. Um, every week I spoke to him, I coached him every week and held him accountable. Um, I motivated him. And yeah, he's lost, uh, I want to say 40, 45 kilos now. Wow, that's unbelievable. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's when I knew when. I found my calling and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's amazing Excellent. to watch people change and get their confidence back and to reboot nice. their life. It's nice. It's a pleasure to do it and I'm very lucky that I found it. Beautiful. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. It makes your heart sing. Um, yeah. Talk to me about, you know, and, and I love effectively what you've done there, which is going, look, this is a passion for me. I'm going to invest you figured that out. You started, uh, uh, you know, in, in um, taking on board that learnings, those lessons, those insights. And then from there, naturally, you know, a lot of people worry about, well, how am I going to get clients? Well, if you just start, you know, doing something you're passionate about, that's going to exude. It's going to come out of your pores, so to speak. And naturally people around you that are interested in this case, obviously a friend of, of your partners, they're going to, you know, come to you anyway. People will naturally be attracted to you when you're doing the things that you love. So I don't really tell people to worry about that too much. Just keep showing up and they'll, they'll come. Obviously there's strategy strategy be it the idea yeah. so i think that's fantastic you work with that guy obviously he's had some amazing results and and that's unbelievable to have lost so much weight that that's yeah. remarkable oh, talk nice. to me about then you go okay well I've, I've created some change for this guy i'm feeling like i can do this you know how do you go about getting your first couple of paid clients what are some of the strategies that you use that if if i'm at home and I've, I've just got my first client sort of pro bono so to speak and i've got some results how do i then start doing that in a way where i can start you know making some money no matter how little it is you know, how do I start making that happen? What are some of the strategies you put in place? I put myself out of my comfort zone completely, 100%, and I started posting online. Because yep. before this, I wasn't a big online person. Yep. Um, I started posting online. I started putting content up that um, people were interested in, and they started yep. engaging with me. They started asking questions. And I, every single day, I showed up, and I put content out there I helped people and whenever I had an opportunity when I was at the gym or at the pool or with friends I would they people would start asking me questions and I would just help them and coach them for free right. and so organically it grew and then I got to the point where okay I need to make this a viable business the bills are yes. coming in so I enrolled in business courses and I took it to the next level Yep. And I took my coaching to the next level as well. And I became a certified NLP coach. And 
now I'm taking it to the next level again and I'm enrolled in a master's um, certification for NLP. Great. Excellent. Excellent. I'm sure there's a good company behind those trainings. Um, <laughs> that's a very good company. Nice. Well done. Um, David, for yourself, in terms of uh, getting started in, in business and, and going from, you know, an employee mindset to then a business owner's mindset and, you know, getting out there and starting to charge as a coach as well, talk us through that process um, and, and how you went about starting your business and getting your first couple of clients. Okay, so I've had businesses in the past, not in either space that I'm currently in. And looking back on it, uh, like there's this word, two words called self-sabotage. I basically self-sabotaged through three businesses before, mm. um, not understanding the dynamics of what was actually needed right. to have a successful business. And that came down to me. It was, it was me. I was self-sabotaging myself for whatever reason. Currently now, um, with the guidelines and with the principles of um, people like yourself, if I'm allowed to mention that, and the courses that you provide, um, I now realise that there's a lot more just to turning up and saying, here I am. You've actually got to build a foundation, build a, a groundwork and build on that. Um, I have been in that six to seven years into the health or the fitness space and I'm still doing that and I've built up quite a strong following through that and it's not through searching on post, on social media or anything like that. It's actually just being there and being uh, an expert in that field and I'm attracting people like that. So much so that now I've actually aligned myself with an allied health professional who does chiropractic, massage, naturopathy, um, and acupuncture right. um, and working out of their facility, um, getting referrals through from them for people working at chiropractors that refer me to knee reconstructions and things like that. My first couple of clients came from those people that I knew who are already currently in my functional fitness groups, which I run, um, who went interested about the mindset that always on how do I do this or how do I get better not yes. just through exercise so um yeah my first paying customers through the beta testing was that and since then just speaking with people through my network i've now got full three fully fledged paying customers at the right price which is going exactly. out to market so well done. um this is really for me i do have a purpose and it's in imparting my knowledge that i've got through life but through uh, the fitness side and the health and all those protocols and now with the mindset protocols as well, delivering products that uh, people can actually be their best. Ah, that's brilliant. Absolutely outstanding. Well done. And like, I think there's a, there's, there's some value in that. And what I love about the story here is you've got, you know, from David's perspective, you know, a career in this industry. So there's a natural network that he's built up that he can start to monetize, you know, for Michelle coming from a corporate environment, it's a completely different lifestyle change, but you can still find clients in your immediate vicinity and network. I think what's important to understand is there's, there's two different fears that I think people that are in similar positions to yourselves will experience. For someone in Michelle's position, it's like, well, I've known you as this corporate person for such a long time. Now you're a, a health coach and, and there's can sometimes be an imposter syndrome that people have to work through. On, on the flip side for David, you know, you've built up a professional uh, sort of resume and curriculum over the years of working with elite organizations or you know, successful businesses. That gives you a lot of clout. Then going out on your own is like, well, now I've got a reputation to uphold as well. And, you know, am I going to be able to deliver? And perhaps if I'm starting to do more stuff in the mindset space, that can be, you know, can certainly come across to, you know, people that are just in the gym drinking protein shakes, a little bit more airy fairy and just, you know, suck it up and deal with it. Right. So, I think it's fantastic that you both approach this from different ways, but you've obviously both created success, which is outstanding. I think that's very, very good. And again, relying on those immediate networks, using that joint venture strategic partnership approach has been excellent as well. You know, doing your hundred person lists, you know, building that relationship and that base. And that gives you the financial springs to then start looking at social media marketing, both organic and paid to grow and build a, um, a client base of people that don't know you yet. But then, you know, you've got that foundation in place, as we've discussed, which is which is excellent. Um, wonderful. Well, look, I, um, I appreciate deeply the time we've spent today. I guess my final thing that I want to just ask you is if you were to give a bit of advice to a, a coach that's just starting or even someone that's, you know, that doesn't really see themselves as a coach, but 
sees themselves as that person that everyone always goes to or asks those questions. Yeah, I think that's it's almost ingrained into people's DNA. What advice would you give, Michelle, for someone that's just starting out that potentially wants to pursue this as a career and maybe one day do this full time as their, their passion? What would be your piece of advice to start? Start with where you are, with what you've got. Start, yeah. just start. Get out of your own way. Let yeah. the fear go and start. And then find someone who can help you. Learn the foundations for an online business or for a business. And when you find them, do what they say 100% because it works. It does work. Yeah. Very, very wise, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for yourself, what piece of advice would you give to somebody that's just starting or, or wants to get started? Mine's very simple. A great coach needs a great coach. Mm. So find yourself a coach or a mentor and sponge or learn off them. But the other thing is I always believe in business now is trust the process. Mm. You've got a process, build that foundation, build it, the old saying, build it and they will come. Trust in the process, it will happen. Yeah, outstanding, fantastic. Uh, David, how can we find out more about you if we wanted to follow you or, uh, or connect in after this webinar? Um, I'm working out of a company called Total Health down in Brookvale, or you can find me on my email, which is davidpembertoncoaching at gmail.com. Easy peasy, fantastic. And Michelle, what about for yourself? How do we find out more about you? Um, I'm online at Michelle Mitchell Health Coach, uh, michellemitchell.com, and yeah, Instagram, Michelle Mitchell Health Coach as well. Outstanding. We'll check all the links up in the bios after this call as well. And if you're listening to us on the podcast, uh, please leave us a comment. If you have any questions, shoot them through as well in, uh, in, the, um, in the chat function, and we'll be sure to pass them on to Michelle and also to David as well. Thank you both so much for your time today. It's been a privilege and a pleasure. Very excited to connect in with you, and I can't wait to see what the next 12 months holds for both of you as well. And for everyone listening at home or watching at home as well, until we see you live or online, be bold, have fun, go make an impact in the world, and we'll see you on the wild side. Good afternoon, guys. Thank you.